Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about group differences and specifically why we would want to do this, which means we have to step way back into our intro research course and get a quick reminder on validity and reliability. So reliability means that you're hitting the same spot consistently. Validity means that you are hitting the target that you intended specifically and consistently. So you can not have validity without reliability. That's why we always start with our Cronbach's alpha in measurement, because we're talking about internal consistency and making sure each person is answering in a consistent and reliable manner. And if we have that, then we can make sure that we are on target with what we are trying to measure. And that's what validity is. It's really trying to understand, are we on the target? Um, are we measuring what we're trying to do? Are we studying what we're trying to do? And unfortunately, this is so confusing because there's not just one aspect, one thing that we can say, I have this, so it is valid. It involves really a logic argument and um, a bunch of evidence that you put together to show that holistically you have a valid measure or a valid study. There are lots of different theories of validity. Um, Messick argued that it was a single concept, again, which is what he called construct validity. So this Unitarian single construct of validity. Kronbach and Mel and many others um, really say that it's a trinity. Construct validity isn't enough. We need criterion validity. We need content validity. It has to be more than just about the latent construct. There has to be more to it. Um, this is what I refer to as measurement validity, this argument, this larger argument across different aspects. Lissa and Samuelson um, talk a lot about a duality concept of validity, where they talk about internal and external. This is what I refer to as study validity. So this is talking about internal and external validity. So we're going to focus on measurement validity in this study, specifically thinking about the construct are we measuring what we claim to be measuring? And there's three larger aspects underneath that, content, criterion, and construct. So content validity is really thinking about the items and the content of the items. Are they measuring the content that you think that they are? Listen, Samuelson say that content is the most important um, Whereas Messick would argue that content validity is good, but it's not enough to be called to make the measure itself holistically valid. And I agree with that. You have to start with content validity. We talk about this in survey methods, um, but it has to go further than that. You're welcome to pause the screen and look at all the ways to think about content validity, but this is talked about in multiple classes. Criterion validity is really thinking about the latent construct and is it what we mean it to be? So does it converge with the similar items? Does it diverge with different items? Um, and that's where the sub aspects of content, I'm sorry, convergent and divergent validity come into play. We can think about it like this. If we're trying to measure statistical anxiety, are we unintentionally just measuring general anxiety? Or are we measuring specifically statistical anxiety? Or if we're trying to measure general anxiety, are we unintentionally actually just measuring their stress level? So making sure that the construct that we are talking about is what we mean it to be. And then we have construct validity. I'm breaking this down into three different ideas as well. So within construct validity, we have scale validity, meaning is the scale being used as intended? Are they actual equal ordered intervals? This is completely assumed in classical test theory. If a category was used, then it was used as intended. Rosh and IRT specifically test this through a lot more detailed manners. Also within construct validity, we then talk about internal structure validity. And this is quite literally looking at dimensionality. We cannot just assume that because we're measuring self-esteem, self-esteem just is a unidimensional construct. Maybe, maybe not. If we're using the Rosenberg self-esteem, this actually measures global self-esteem and is unidimensional. The harder self-esteem scale, though, measures several dimensions of self-esteem and is therefore multidimensional. 
Evidence for this is our EFA, CFA, and if we're in um, IRT models, it's the principal component of analysis, the PCAR. The third aspect of construct validity is invariance, and this is making sure that the model does not vary by groups. So there's not something about a participant that would influence the way that they're responding um, on a measure. We talk about this really as a model and potentially as items, and is it functioning the same across different populations? The two ways that we're going to talk about this is do items load onto factors similarly across groups? So does the model as a whole function the same? And do individual items function differently across groups? The way that we check this is multiple group CFA um, or differential item functioning in IRT. So within measure invariance, we're talking about kind of multiple levels of invariance. We in this class in structural equation modeling are only going into configural invariance. So structurally, does the model hold as a whole for all groups? Metric invariance takes us a little bit further and it starts locking things within our, within our model to see if factor loadings are functioning the same across groups. I will say that if factor loadings are functioning differently across groups, we see that really obviously in the configural invariance stage as well, if they're extreme. We can go further and lock um, for scalar invariance. So we're locking intercepts in this case. So these first three are kind of the way that classical test theory measures invariance. Item invariance takes it further in item response theory, where we're looking at the individual items and are they functioning the same across groups? We don't really talk about individual items up here. It's, it's implied through factor loadings, um, but it's a much better way to test it through differential item functioning, um, through item response theory modeling, if you want to look at item-specific invariance.